Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Um, I have three Spanish reds in front of me, uh, and um, so three different regions, uh, several different grapes. Uh, let's just dig in and see where we get to. First one, uh, Encino 2013 from Biezzo. Um, so not quite in Galicia here, it's that uh, bit of Castilla y Leon uh, just through, there's a mountain pass, and uh, uh, but it still gets a little bit of that Atlantic influence blowing through that pass. Um, the, the grape here, 100% Mencia. Uh, yep, 100% Mencio, um, and um, uh, I select only the best Mencio grapes grown from old vines in a vineyard surrounded by the Encino oak trees, hence the name, blah blah blah. Let's just dig in and see where we get to. Uh, I think of um, Mencio as being sometimes Syrah meets Cabernet Franc, um, the fr a bit of fragrance of both, a bit of the wild meatiness of Syrah, uh, a bit of the perfume of, um, of Cabernet Franc. Um, here, uh, what I notice is there's a little bit of um, a slightly sulfury character that makes me want to keep swirling it and um, and see if it comes out of its shell because behind it it feels like there's a uh, rather juicy, um, slightly wild, spicy wine that uh, needs to uh, yeah needs to be unlocked. So I'm going to do a little bit more unlocking and I'll come back in a moment. Yeah, fresh, spicy, um, and currently there's a little bit of. Uh, I think it's, that, again, that sulphur edge, uh, giving it a little bit of hardness. Um, and I, I th it certainly just, I mean, you know, I uncorked it, but didn't decant it or anything about half an hour ago. And it really does feel like a, a, a wine that is just sort of going, go on, let me out, let me out, and needs to, uh, needs to blossom. Uh, I like the flavours, I like the fragrance. Uh, there's this slightly meaty character that's going on in there. Uh, I suppose my only concern is, um, will that little edge of sulphur that's uh, that's restraining it at the moment uh, let go and uh, let the wine blossom so i think that's uh, that for me is a wine that i want to um, come back to maybe in an hour or so so i will report back as it is at the moment it looks like good work in progress it's already getting a little bit uh, fleshier and um, um, again there's a, there's a lightness and uh, despite the 13 percent alcohol which isn't really light wine but there is a, a gentleness and um, a daintiness about it, which, which I do like. Wine number two, Finca Constancia uh, Cosseca 2011. Uh, so we're near Toledo here, pretty much in the middle of Spain. Uh, grapes, uh, oh, a cocktail of them, Tempranillo, Cabernet, Syrah, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdo and Graciano. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Well, it's two years older and uh, it's in a warmer part of Spain. Uh, although they probably, it's probably one of those places where it's quite high up and they might get warmer days, but maybe slightly cooler nights. Uh, but uh, here, uh, the, the extra age and uh, the, the, the more southerly latitude uh, gives a, a, a rounder, a softer um, character to the wine. Um, and um, I, I would almost like them to have done more Grenache or something in there, because uh, I think about the, the grapes that they've got in there, those Bordeaux ones. Um, and uh, Syrah, did it say Syrah? I think it said Syrah in there, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I think of those as, uh, as being a cooler climate uh, grapes than uh, than the things that uh, work in the middle of Spain. Hey, sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. Most of the time I'm wrong. Uh, but it smells like it's going to be a little more, what I call, international. Uh, maybe the previous one was a little bit more Spanish and wild. Here, it feels like it's been... Yeah, it's been it's it's uh, it's it's what you'd expect. It sort of ticks it ticks the right boxes, but maybe doesn't tick the wildness box in the way that uh, the first one did. I feel the warmth of the region coming through, um, and my concern about those grapes um, maybe what how that is manifesting itself is that some of them. Yeah, it's the, the climate is probably a little bit too warm, and in a, in order to get the flavours right, you're having to leave those grapes on the vine a little bit too long, and uh, some of them feel like they've started to shrivel. So I'm getting these this slightly dry tannic um, character on the back of my yeah back in the back of my mouth. I like the flavours, not sure about the um, that structure, and there's a little bit of uh, volatility there. It's 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 okay, um, and I think that if I had a, a large hunk of um, cabrido or something uh, suitably, uh, that's something that's been in an oven rather long time and started to fall off the bone, then um, I would probably be cooing. Um, let's see whether I coo over the final wine. Uh, so we're back further north here uh, in Monsant for Denuda uh, by Frank Massa. Monsant is the bit that um, 
as Priorat, and then Mont Saint almost, it's almost like a bit like a horseshoe uh, surrounding uh, Mont Saint, but it's made from the, the same gra I said grapes and varieties at one word, variety. I quite like that. It does sound a bit like the Gruffalo. Uh, but Grenache and Carignan, or Samso as it's sometimes called. Soft, warm, jammy dodger. Um, I mean, this is a gr Grenache uh, can has that tendency to go uh, a little bit jammy sometimes, and uh, here I, I pick up that character which I think of as. Can't remember. The, I don't really like jammy dodger biscuits, but the, the, there was a certain character about them I remember from uh, uh, my father bringing them back. I'm sure he nicked them from the school tuck shop when he was a headmaster of a primary school. But uh, I. I, I, what I remember is, is this, the, the, it, there's a red berry flavour, but there's a little baked edge as well, and that, that's what I get there. Uh, I Maybe I miss, uh, I'd almost like a little bit more of the, uh, the wild edge of Carignan to come through. Actually, it's getting a bit wilder as it, as it, uh, as it opens out, and uh, the jamminess is, is staying there, but um, yeah, other things are growing around it. Better taste it. It's got these brambly characters that are, are coming through. Yeah, the juicy berry, that's like baked edge. Um, there's a slightly, a slight hard edge on the finish, and I'm not sure uh, whether that is somebody who's been who's picked grapes that are a little bit overripe and uh, has um, I don't know whether he's acidified, but there's a slight hardness on the finish just that, that uh, concerns me. Um, it, and it, it, what it does is it the, the, the flavours are, are, are nice, juicy. They were probably that little bit too voluptuous. It rains them in, but it doesn't rain them in in a subtle way. It sort of cajoles them and jostles them rather than just gently draws them in. Um, I um, I like it, but I, I wish I liked it more. Um, and um, probably say the same about all of these. I mean, the, the, the Bietzo is the one that I'm by. I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye on and watching whether it comes out of its shell. And be assured, I will report back, as I always do. See you soon. Bye.